I, like many other Warhammer players, have a pretty decent Space Marine army. The big difference with mine though is that it's almost entirely unpainted. The Indomitus box that came out almost three years ago has sat pretty much untouched on my shelf and I am adamant that before the rumoured 10th edition of Warhammer 40k lands later this year, I want to get at least this box painted, otherwise realistically I am never going to get my backlog painted. The one thing that has held me back from painting this army for so long though is that I've not been able to settle on a colour scheme I've been happy with. I guess I could have painted them as one of the founding chapters, but that just doesn't feel quite right to me as I'd like to be able to add my own personal flavour and flair to my own army. Now I think I might have finally decided on a colour scheme idea, and it was inspired by one of the most unlikely of creatures. So let me tell you a little bit about them and let's get some colour tests done. I'm Benji and welcome to Benji's Hobbies. So this is the little creature that is the inspiration for my Space Marine army. These little dudes are Lygodactylus Williams Eye, or the Electric Blue Day Gecko, and about a decade ago I used to keep and breed these amazing little creatures, so they hold a pretty special place in my heart. Hatching them from eggs and raising them from tiny thumb-sized hatchlings was so incredibly rewarding. They come from a tiny area of Tanzania and since around 2013 are now unfortunately classed as critically endangered, partially due to collection for the pet trade but also due to habitat destruction and now require paperwork in order to legally sell or trade this beautiful species, so it's now incredibly rare to see them kept as pets. One of the pretty obvious reasons why this species was so popular is because of the stunning coloration. They have a really striking blue or even turquoisey depending on their mood, an orangey underside and small black flecks around the head. But that's enough of the natural history lecture, let's get back to Space Marines. As I said, these guys really hold a special place in my heart and I just absolutely love the coloration, so I've decided that I'm going to paint my Space Marine army in their honour. Before I crack on with the army though, it's always wise to try out any schemes on a tester model before committing to a larger army, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I was super lucky to be sent a box of the brand new Army Painter Speed Paints to try out. I've not always been the biggest fan of Army Painter, but with the good things I've been hearing about the new range of Speed Paints, plus the fact that they're listening to customer and creator feedback means that I'm willing to give them a good go and the range of blues in the mega set means that there are loads of options for me to try out. I primed all the marines with Colourforge Grey before giving them a dry brush with an assortment of greys and whites to establish my undertones. I'm hoping that this way I'll get the best results out of the speed paints and use them to their full potential. My aim with the scheme that I end up going for is finding something that gives me a decent finish but is also quick and easy enough to paint an entire army with. If speed paints and using the slap shot method can help me get the armour looking half decent, then I'm all for it. The five blues I'm trying out today are Royal Robes, Tidal Wave, Magic Blue, Caribbean Ocean and Raging Sea. From looking at the bottles and the back of the box, I think at least one of these will match the look that I'm going for. One by one I'm applying the paint all over the armour of the Space Marines whilst trying to avoid some of the sections between panels which I'll be painting black later on. For the purpose of this test I'm also not diluting any of them with the speed paint medium as I'd like to see how they fare straight out of the bottle which will make consistency between miniatures a lot easier down the line as well. Also at this stage I'm not going to be using them out of an airbrush, but when I do decide on a scheme it's more than likely I'll help speed up the process entirely by using an airbrush, but for now I'm just sticking to a regular old brush. In terms of application I'm actually pretty happy with all of the blues. They've covered incredibly well and have done what speed paints should do, which is darken the recesses and highlight the more prominent areas and honestly I cannot fault them. Some of them I can definitely see being used for certain armies. Raging Sea, for example, would make a great Alpha Legion colour over a metallic base coat, while its royal robes would look great as the dominant colour in a Crimson Fist army. 
My favourite two though are Caribbean Ocean and Magic Blue, and honestly I'm really torn about which one to pick as the main colour for my Space Marine army, but I think Magic Blue just pips it. Before I finish off with the rest of the scheme though, let me tell you a little bit about this video sponsor. Now even though my YouTube channel has been up and running for over two years, I still feel some serious imposter syndrome. But one thing that definitely makes me look and feel more legit is having my own dedicated website hosted by the dudes over at Squarespace. Squarespace make it so easy to set up a professional looking website in just a few clicks. Their templates are effortless to use and totally customizable to my needs, so I can make a website that is personal to me and that I can be really proud of. One of my favorite features is being able to embed videos in my site, so you can check out my most recent YouTube videos direct from my website rather than having to search for them through YouTube. And what's more, I can check out a ton of analytics and get some insight into how much traffic my site is getting, all from just a few clicks. So if you want to look like a totally legit YouTuber just like me, then go and set up a Squarespace website today. And by using my link, which you'll find down in the description below, you'll save a chunky 10% off your first website or domain purchase. I mean, what's not to love? With the main base colors down, it's time to get down to business on the rest of the model. I'm going to use the Army Painter Grim Black Speed Paint in a couple of ways. First off, I'm going to use it traditionally to paint the gun casing and sections between the armour plates. Secondly though, I'm mixing it up with a small amount of medium and I'm going to use it as a pin wash along all the recesses and grooves to really darken them down to have that extra bit of contrast and honestly I'm absolutely loving the effect and it's so simple too. Next up, it's time to put yet another new paint set to the test, and this time it's Duncan's very own Two Thin Coats. Whilst I really like the slap chop method, I really want to get the best results for me, and that means hybridizing how I paint, using slap chop for the larger areas, but the more traditional base coat, wash and highlight for the details. One of the colours that I really want to be prominent on my army, again following the electric blue gecko colour scheme, is a bright orange Aquila on the chest. I used Fnatic Orange as the base coat for the Aquila, and just like the branding suggests, I used two thin coats to get good coverage, and then followed this up with orange flare before mixing in a little trooper white to highlight the very highest points. One thing that I'd like to note at this point is that I've not seen any reactivation in the speed paint. I know this was something that was highlighted as a bit of an issue with some of the old speed paints, but once the new ones are dry, or magic blue at least, it seems like there isn't any reactivation at all. So that's a really big thumbs up for Army Painter. I painted in the rest of the details using metallics from Two Thin Coats and opting for Doom Death Black around the rims of the shoulder pads before highlighting these up with Wizard's Grey and finally Kakaradon Grey on the very edges. Last but not least, I highlighted up the armour with a little Temple Guard blue, and finally mixed in a little white for the very, very final highlight. Based with Grimdark Rubble from Geek Gaming Scenics, the dark base really shows off the brightness of the armour, and I think he's looking pretty good, and personally think he's more than good enough for the table. Overall, I feel like I managed to achieve the look I was going for in matching the colour of the electric blue geckos. The super bright blue armour, the small amount of black trim, and the bright orange flash across the chest are just the looks I was going for. And the scheme was pretty simple as well, so I think this is definitely a scheme I could expand across the rest of my army pretty easily. Now I just need to find some suitable decals, or maybe even some custom ones to add those little final finishing touches. Now all that's left to decide is what chapter are they going to be part of. I have my own ideas, but if you've got any suggestions, I would love to hear them down in the comments below. And once you're down there, make sure you hit that like button as well. A big shout out to both Army Painter and Two Thin Coats for sending me their new paint ranges. I didn't test them extensively on this project. The ones I did use performed admirably, and I'm really excited to put the rest of the range through its paces. Make sure you go and check out Squarespace too if you want to get a chunky 10% off your first order of a website or domain. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.